morning everyone and welcome to our online service for the 15th of November, the second Sunday before Advent. As I'm recording this, the Northern Ireland Assembly are still debating what changes may be brought in to all the coronavirus restrictions that are currently in place. Maybe by the time you see this service, uh, we'll know the answer to that and whether anything has changed in recent days. But it does look as if the restrictions are going to be with us uh, for a little while yet. In terms of our church services, that means that the restrictions still apply in some ways. We do have a service each Sunday in the church hall at 11 o'clock with restrictions in place. And I'd love to see you coming along to that just as and when you're ready to do so. But of course our online services also continue here on YouTube each Sunday. And we'll be continuing with that at least up until Christmas or the end of the year. And we'll see what changes come in after that stage. So this morning we come to worship together. And we simply remember that even though we are apart because of all the restrictions, we still meet in God's name and in God's presence as we worship together. The Lord be with you. The Bible says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. May we be inspired with a sense of awe and wonder as we come to worship God together this morning. Heavenly Father, in our worship, help us to sing your praise, to hear your word, and to bring our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength is all. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh The fullness of God in helpless play This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I lay. Just blood of Christ 
life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and to be faithful to Christ. As we offer our prayers to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. And so we confess our sins together. O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you we have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is faithful and forgiving. Through the cross of Christ, he has mercy on us pardons us and sets us free. Know that your sins are forgiven in Christ and be at peace. Amen. I'll invite you to say with me the words of praise from Psalm 100, which we know as the canticle Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth serve the lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy know that the lord he is god it is he who has made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. Jesus tells the parable of the talents. Jesus said, Again, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went out and at once put his money to work to gain five more. So also the one who had two talents gained two more. But the one who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man who had two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has five. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we dip for the last time, for the last time for now at least, into the parables of Jesus from Matthew's Gospel. And today we come to a very familiar parable, the parable of the talents, which as I'm sure you know has to do with the thorny subject material of money, finance and our attitudes towards it. It's now just over 13 years since the global financial crisis 
that has affectionately become known as the credit crunch. And in the years since that, well, we've all felt the effects of it in some way, haven't we? Huge international organisations like the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund were rocked by the credit crunch. National institutions such as the Bank of England or the US Federal Reserve reeled with the shock of those years. And we became familiar with names like Lehman Brothers or Northern Rock, the bank, or indeed many other familiar names that either sank or struggled to float during those times. Even churches were not immune to all the financial difficulties, as our Presbyterian friends discovered when the Presbyterian Mutual Fund was frozen. And for the financial markets of the world, the years since 2007 have been a real roller coaster of a ride, all sorts of ups and downs and turmoil. More locally, we've had, for example, the financial scandal of PPI insurance, or indeed in our own province, all the chaos caused by the renewable heat incentive scheme and all the financial trouble associated with that that has engulfed our local government. And now we're faced with a whole raft of new difficulties because of the coronavirus pandemic. Increased unemployment, increasing poverty, massive government borrowing, probably higher tax payments to be made in order to pay for all the things that we've seen in recent weeks. And who knows what other sorts of financial problems that lie ahead of us. I wonder when you hear news stories about that sort of thing, do you feel a little bit like me? Do you feel that you only understand a fraction of what's being said and most of it goes right over your head? I know I sometimes feel that way. I wonder, do you feel the same? You see, it's really only those who have a much greater understanding of fi financial expertise who can grasp some of the, the bigger picture, some of the things that we hear about in the news, all the ups and downs of the financial market. Most of us, I suspect, simply entrust our money to the bank and we expect them to manage it well. We trust them to handle our money wisely and we may also hope that as they do so, they'll earn a little bit of interest for us. We may not understand it all. We may feel in over our heads at times, but we simply entrust the money to the bank and trust them to look after it for us. Jesus, of course, told a story, a parable, about a man who handed over his money to others and entrusted them with it. The parable of the talents. A master is going on a journey and he left some money in the care of his three servants, three different amounts. He entrusted them to manage his finances well and he also expected them to earn little interest on the money that he had left with them. When he returned from his journey, he discovered that two of them had done so, but the other hadn't. The one who had been given five talents had earned five talents more. The one who had been given two talents had earned two talents more. But the one who had been given only one talent earned nothing. He had simply buried it in the ground and then dug it up again when he had heard of his master's return. The equivalent, I suppose, of just keeping your savings under the mattress. And the master commended the first two, but was angry with the third servant. Mm -hmm. Notice two things about this particular story. First, notice that it all belonged to the master. It was only entrusted to his servants but it all belonged to the master. And in the end, the master called on the servants to account for how they had used his finances. And secondly, 
notice that the amount didn't really matter. The amount of money wasn't the important thing. What really mattered was whether the servants had used the master's money well. The reality is that God has given to each of us a certain amount by way of money or material possessions. The master has entrusted each of us with a certain amount. And yes, some have been blessed with more than others. Some have a greater income. Some have received a larger inheritance. Some are just more affluent than others. But God has entrusted each one of us with a certain amount. You might wish that God had entrusted you with more, but whatever little bit you have, God has entrusted you with that. But no matter how much or how little you've been given, we need to remember that it all belongs to the Master. You might have thought that your house, your car, your business, your bank account all belong to you. But ultimately, of course, it all belongs to God. God has entrusted us with that much for here and for now. But as is often said, you can't take it with you. Ultimately, it all belongs to God. Most of us probably don't fully understand the bigger financial picture. But we do at least have some understanding of what's happening to our little share of it. And we all have to make decisions about how we manage the material possessions or the finances that we have. Whatever God has given to you, he has given it to you so that you can meet your needs first and foremost. He's also given it to you so that it may be a source of blessing and a source of joy. It's all right to spend much of it on yourself. God wants you to enjoy and to benefit from the material blessings that he has given to you. But as well as that, as that, of course, God has given it to you so that you can use it in his service. He has given it to you to use in the work of extending God's kingdom. And he has given it to you so that you can give some of it back by way of generosity in helping others in showing God's love and compassion towards those in need. So whatever God has given you, use it wisely. Use it in God's service. Ultimately, it belongs to God. God has entrusted it to you. Use it as he would want you to. Over the next few weeks, we're all going to be very conscious of the approach of Christmas. First Advent and then Christmas. It's the time of year when we think of giving to others. It's the time of year when we're encouraged to be generous. And within our church at this time of year, we'll be trying to encourage every member of the parish towards generosity, to encourage you to be as generous as you, as you can, if you possibly can. As the end of another financial year approaches, we would love you to ensure that your free will offering envelopes, your donations for this year are brought up to date and to make sure that you've got your new set of envelopes for the year ahead for 2021. But also in December and over the Christmas period, we normally appeal for your generosity in giving to charities such as Bishop's Appeal. And this year will be no different. But I won't say any more about that just yet. Next week, along with all the other parishes in the diocese, we'll have a special sermon video from Bishop David on the subject of giving and generosity. That video, that sermon, will include details of how the diocese is encouraging us all and appealing for our generosity. And then after that, I'll have some more information for you about how we as a parish can respond and be generous. But that will come in the December services and the information will be in the parish magazine. 
for now, as we think of this parable of the talents, let's simply give thanks to God for whatever amount of material blessing he has entrusted to each of us. Whatever God has given to you, be thankful for it. And whether it is much or little, we remember that it all belongs to God, that God has entrusted it into our hands and that he calls us to use it wisely in his service and for his glory. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray as Christ our Lord commanded. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. And today we hear the collect of the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, 
for he is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray today for our church, that we, be, we would be drawn to greater devotion to God and more faithful service. Lord and Heavenly Father, make us mindful always of your presence with us, and especially in this hour of worship, that we may draw near to you with holy and humble hearts and offer prayers and praises acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray also for our nation and its rulers. Lord God, your rule extends over all the earth, yet you have committed authority to the leaders of the nations. Grant to our Prime Minister and to all the members of the Cabinet insight, compassion and courage, effectively to meet the demands of these days. And to all members of Parliament and of our National Assemblies in Wales and Scotland and here in Northern Ireland, give your wisdom and humility in taking counsel together that their decisions may promote the well-being of the whole nation and more clearly express your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray too today for all those who are ill or troubled or recently bereaved. Heavenly Father, we know that all healing comes from you. And therefore, we ask for your healing for those who are ill, for your comfort for those who are struggling with difficulties, for your peace for those who are bereaved. We pray too, Lord, for your blessing for all who are engaged in any type of healing. We pray for doctors and surgeons, for psychiatrists, for health visitors and district nurses, for the staff who work in our local hospitals and clinics, for all those who nurse sick or elderly at home. Give to them, O Lord, all needful wisdom and skill and patience. And may they know that in ministering to the sick, that they are fellow workers with you and furthering your purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally we pray for one another, saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. May the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace at all times and in every way. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Christ.